Exodus 7, 8 through 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Whether you're in this room or you're watching online, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And the subject that I am assigned to give you this morning is the intoxication of entertainment. The intoxication of entertainment. Lord Jesus, have your way in this house. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. Thank you for what you're about to do. I pray you get me out of the way and do exactly what you want in every situation, in the building and in the homes. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord. Speak as only you can speak. We receive the word of the Lord. We open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the moving of the Holy Ghost in our homes and in our lives, in our family, in our hearts and minds. Have your way this morning, I pray, in every situation. And somebody said, in Jesus' name, you may be seated. I truly believe through biblical example that if you're going to do something great for God, you're going to have to challenge and confront your own personal giant before it's over. I believe you're going to have to somehow, before you get that destiny that you're praying about, you get to that place where you're flowing in the perfect will of God, that you're going to have to confront the thing that is standing in your way, whether it's a Goliath like David had to throw a rock at, or Herod, that John the Baptist had to stand before, or a lion's den that Daniel had to brave, or a furnace full of fire that Shadrach would not bow down in front of. Sooner or later, every single one of us has to make a stand for what is right in our personal lives. Aren't you thankful for a pastor and a church that preaches that you must make a stand personally, not just corporately? Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. If you're going to do something great, you're going to have to stand in front of the king of the greatest nation in the world, a place that you ran away from when they threatened to kill you back in your past, and now you have to go return to the place that you ran from, and you have to declare with authority and power that I am there to deliver them, and I am going to get everyone out of the bondage that they are in. And so Moses goes back to confront his giant or to confront his past, and he goes and meets a man by the name of Pharaoh, or that's his title, his position, the king of Egypt. And now we understand something that we've always preached, the different things Pharaoh did in cruelty. When I think of Pharaoh, I think of uh, babies that are dying. He killed thousands of children. I think of bondage. I think of slavery. I think of cruelty and taskmasters and whips and chains and all kind of horrible treatment to human beings. But, but, uh, but the thing that I did not think of until the Lord began to press this upon me a few months ago. And the number one thing that God told Moses you're going to encounter when you deal with Pharaoh, the first thing that Pharaoh is going to say to you is show you a miracle. Show me something. Perform for me. Because the spirit of Pharaoh is the spirit of entertainment. And it loves to watch no matter what's going on, whether it's watching the cruelty of things around it or watching the man of God perform, Moses, Pharaoh is going to want a show when you get there. It is very dangerous when we start to view the preaching of the word of God as a show. I'll wait on you. 
It is dangerous when you come to watch someone perform. Can I just say it like I feel? I am not anointed as an actor to give you some kind of goosebumps and make you feel good. We are anointed of God to deliver you from every bondage and every chain and every addiction that's in your house and in your life. The spirit of entertainment can control show me a miracle uh, I want to be impressed by your power I, come on impress me with what happened at the burning bush in your life come on let me see what happened through your consecration it's dangerous when you try to ride somebody's coattail into the demonstration power of God you have to get your own walk with God you have to have your own relationship with God where it doesn't matter if I have a good word or not. I'm going to get in the house of God and get a breakthrough every single time because I have a walk with God that no one sees seven days a week. Mm. Show. Come on, perform. Perform. Let us, uh, uh, that's the problem with the North American church. We, we love miracles, but we love to watch them. Did you hear what happened at church today? Across the aisle, down the road, someone got a breakthrough. What happened for you? Oh, I was watching then. We love to watch it. We are entertained by it, and Bishop used the word I plan to use several times. We are entertained by the miraculous, but we very rarely engage it. And it is the will of God for us to engage his spirit every time it's in the atmosphere. If you're watching at your house right now, I want you to engage what's happening in this atmosphere because it's not sent to entertain you. Because here's the problem with the spirit of entertainment. It's never satisfied. So after Moses throws the rod down and it becomes a snake, Pharaoh's not content because he's consumed with watching stuff, so he goes to the world for entertainment. Oh, I'm going to preach to you. We're going to have fun here. <laughs> oh, that was powerful. Whoa, man. He, the preacher, wow, what a move of God. I just, well, I watched it. It was amazing. And let me put something else on. Come on. Yeah, thank you for no amens at all. Wow, I'm going to preach right here now. So, Pharaoh said, wow, that was amazing, but I'm still craving to watch something. So, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the world perform now. You know you're stuck in entertainment when you can watch church and watch horrible things on the same day. You know it's quiet today. You know it's dangerous when you go to church and you do not engage and you're entertained by it and you wonder why you can't get delivered from an addiction of watching something. It's the spirit of entertainment. It's not just in people in saints' life. It's, it's in preachers. I, I, I'm getting nervous. The last year, I know COVID, COVID, the worst thing about COVID that happened to the church was COVID turned the engaged church into an entertainment church. We're now, in this, and if you're at home and you have to be at home, I'm not making light of that, but I'm saying it's, it, you, can, you can be at home and not go to an altar call. You can turn it off when the preacher's done and keep folding the laundry. But when you are in the presence of God, Something. It's why I want the presence of God to get in your bedroom right now and in your office and in your living room because if the presence of God invades an atmosphere, it demands response from the child of God to engage it. Mm. I talked to preachers in this last year with COVID who used to be excited about baptisms and they're more excited about views online than baptisms now. We're excited about someone scrolling for three seconds on Facebook and seeing the message for three seconds, getting nothing out of it. Then someone going down the water, coming up. We have got to remember who we are. We are the apostolic church, and we're not sent to entertain the world. We are sent to save the world from what they are bound by. So it's 
Janus and Jambres, Brother Joel, that was the names of the magicians, according to Timothy. And one of them's name means uh, to vex. Janus' name means to vex. And Jambres' his name means the, the healer or the foamy healer, like ocean foam. Foamy healer. He's a, he's a sorcerer. He's a, he's, he's, he's a fraudulent healer. And, and Janus has a vexing. He releases demons when he comes out. These, these guys are possessed by hell. And they're coming to encounter the man of God and his power. And the problem with the spirit of entertainment, everybody, is that when you get locked into it and you get and you you're you're watching church and you're watching the world, sooner or later you unleash a snake fight in your atmosphere. And your breakthroughs that you get in church now have to war with your breakdowns that you have when I'm preaching to you when nobody's around. You can look at me like I'm crazy, but I know what God said. I'm on a fast, trust me. Let me tell you in the Holy Ghost, it's dangerous when we get in the house of God and what we feel in the house of God has to war with what we're participating in outside the house of God. And who knows who's going to win? It all depends on what we're moved by more. That's why if you need deliverance, you can't kind of partially attempt to reach out for it when when Moses is in the atmosphere. You can't partially attempt Pharaoh to say, well, I, well, I kind of know I need to be delivered, but, but you have to make up your mind. I need to get this because there's another, there's another spirit. There's a Janus and a Jambres in my home, on my kid, in my marriage, in my family that wants to destroy everything I'm doing, and because it's trying to destroy it, I need to engage the encounter with God. Oh, and a snake fight breaks out. And anointing is going against addiction. There's a war in the heavenlies for your attention. And hell is always reacting, trying to do something. That's why you get a breakthrough and then you have a breakdown two days later. Because hell's always reacting to when you engage the spirit. Some of you need to engage it. Oh, and Moses, I want you to tell him that, that he needs to let my people go. And he's not going to. See, it's dangerous when you live in two currents. That's what happened in Acts 27 when they were in the ship. And they, they, the Bible says they got to a place where two seas met or two flows were going the opposite direction. And they tried to sail their ship in two different currents. And when you try to flow through life, living for God on Sunday and Wednesday and being chilled Monday through Friday and not connected, there's something that happens. You're trying to live in two different flows. And that's what causes shipwreck or divorce. It's quiet. Y'all with me? Some of you are like, uh-uh. Well, I'm with you. <laughs> Can I come down here? I'll, I'll stay right here. Luke eleven thirty four. 34. I don't know if you put that on the screen, but I want, you to, I, want to, I want you to show what Jesus said about Luke eleven thirty four. 34. He said, the light of the body is the eye. He said, if, you're, if, if you're, your eye is single, your whole body is full of light or focused or one, one, one thing, but when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. You know what that means? That if hell gets into your eyes, it gets into your life. Some people watch things they would never actually do. But hell doesn't care if you perform the act. Hell just wants in your spirit. In fact, the Bible said that they had eyes full of adultery. They're, in other words, hell gets in their eyes and then it changes how they think. Am I right? There's a spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost. And the demons of hell are simply looking for a window or an access point to get into the child of God's life. And Jesus said, that's where they come in. The eye. That's where they engage. And so Moses and Aaron throw the rod down. The rod becomes a serpent, and Pharaoh's magicians do it, and now there's a war, and, and Moses and Aaron's rod, the rod eats up the rods, the serpents of Pharaoh. 
That should have told Pharaoh right there. Don't mess with the power of the man of God. Don't mess with that anointing that you're experiencing. Don't talk bad about pastor. When you come here and feel that, that ought to tell you that the snake that's released in the spirit, there's something powerful about what's going on. But, you know, entertainment, it's just, so let's, let's go to the water and see. That's what, and so he's so consumed that they go down to the water and God said, turn the water into blood. And so Moses stretches forth the rod and, and the water turns into the blood. And Pharaoh's like, wow, that was powerful. Wow, we had good church. Boy, we had a move. Wow. There was transformation that took place. Somebody left changed. The water turned to blood. Oh, I need to watch something else. Magicians. And they turned the water into blood. And the New Living Translation says that Pharaoh went into his house and put it out of his mind. Plague season. But it's not close enough to home yet. Just, just watching the shows, spiritual and wicked. And I can just put it out of my mind when I'm done. Hila Roshakata. Put it out of his mind. It's just, another, just, another, just another show. Just another service. Just another encounter. And so... God said to Moses, huh, and you got to love God's sense of humor. Pharaoh's not going to listen to the water becoming blood and, and, you know, the serpent eating it. Loose the frogs. God can, be, God can get a creepy sense of humor sometimes. It's like, oh, they're going to they're gonna pay attention. I'm going to get frogs everywhere. I bet everyone would pay attention to God if there was five million frogs in your home when you got home today from church. Like, what in the world? And apparently, Bishop, the frogs got in Pharaoh's house because this is the first time he's now uncomfortable with the moving of God because, because now the plague has gotten too close to home. It's no big deal if I don't feel it, what's going on in the world right now. I don't have to have a prayer life if I don't feel the pain of America. Or the pain of my neighbors or the pain of loved ones who are burying their loved ones. I, I, I don't have to get consecrated if I don't feel the pain. But it's when something, it's when something gets in your house. And that's why I pray for altar calls that don't just die seven minutes after we leave church, but they go home to our houses with us because I want the move of God to live, not just in the atmosphere where I'm preaching, but I want to live where I live. Do messages go home with you or do you forget the title 30 seconds after it's over? And, and so the frogs are everywhere, Bishop, and he comes to Moses. And, okay, you, listen, this, this is gross. Get the frogs out. And Moses said, okay, when? And Pharaoh says, tomorrow. What? Pharaoh's a little creepy, I think. What's wrong with you, dude? You've got Moses. You've got Mo in your palace you know the the one that has all this plague power he has the power to get the frogs out now why do you want one more night with him i want to i want to say a statement i want you to put in your spirit the proof that someone's intoxicated with entertainment is they want their deliverance tomorrow they want a prayer life just tomorrow they want to fast tomorrow. Here's the statement. Entertainment does not kill your ability or your desire. I should say it like that. Entertainment does not kill your desire to consecrate. It kills your discipline to consecrate. 
Entertainment does not keep you from wanting a prayer life. Entertainment does not keep you from wanting to read your Bible. Entertainment does not keep you from knowing I need to fast or I need to give. But entertainment keeps you from following through on what you want to come on. I got five of you right now. I wish I could wake up Atlanta West in this place and realize turn the screen off and turn your Bible back on in the atmosphere and you'll feel what I'm preaching to you right now. Well, I don't feel it. It's because something else has engaged your spirit. You need to shut it down and say, God, open my eyes to your word and my ears to your voice. I want it just tomorrow. I know I need to start praying. I know I need to start paying my tithes. I know I need to be faithful. I know I need to go to church. I know I need to get connected. I just want to do it. Because intoxication starts with excitement and euphoria. There's like seven steps to it. But before long, you enter a stupor and confusion and comatose. And death is the final stage of intoxic intoxication. And you start off with it's fine the way it is. But then before long, you drift and you drift and you drift. And I know I need to get right. That's why you hear people out in the world. I know I need to get back in church. You talk to a loved one. Have you ever, I know it's, it's one thing to witness, I'm off my notes, but I feel the Holy Ghost. It's one thing to witness to someone, you know, that staunch against coming to the house of God and being delivered or, you know, it's, it's, you know, but it's one thing, it's, it's a totally different subject when you go and they're open, but there's just something there blocking them. Oh, I know you're right. Oh, I, I, I know I need to get back there. Oh, I know. Once I just get a few things straightened out. Something's distracting me. I know I need to get I know I need to get back to church, but something's distracting me. And Pharaoh said, I know we gotta get rid of this stuff, but it's just crazy. I mean, it's everywhere. Wow. Just one more night in awe, but not changed. And the magicians unleashed the frogs too. It must not be that powerful because I'm feeling just, I get just as emotional in, a, in the movie. Well, if preacher, if I, if, I turn, if I turn the series off, I, don't, I won't know who dies. I know who's dead. You. How's that for being an evangelist? Well, you just don't know. It's, it's this fictional series. And I'm more moved by it. I'm off my notes, but I feel Jesus. I'm more moved by it. Why do I weep in a movie and not in the altar call? I feel like pre. Why, do I, why am I stirred emotionally by two fictional characters? And it does, but when I read the story of Jesus dying on the cross, I just skim through it like it's no big deal. In my daily read, something needs to change where when I feel God, I am stirred. Somebody clap your hands and engage him right now. Somebody lift your voice and engage him right now. Want to go deeper? Let's go deeper. God's trying to get Pharaoh's attention, and Pharaoh keeps hardening his heart. So God said, okay, Moses, unleash the lice, which actually in Hebrew was ticks, but still, I mean, lice or ticks, nasty. A plague of them, not one in your dog's back, like millions on you. And Pharaoh's like, my goodness, this, see, it's so, it's what's so powerful about church at Atlanta West when you get around it, if it gets close to you, it keeps coming after you. The atmosphere comes after you. And, and so he's like, well, uh, uh, 
This is disgusting. Magicians, make some lice appear. You did the frogs, the water, the snakes. Make some lice appear. And they go to do it, and they couldn't. There, I want you to get this too. There comes a point, if you're drunk on entertainment, if you stay around the presence of God and try to live in both flows, where there will be a moment where the entertainment will admit, I cannot do for you what, ha what he does for you. I cannot do to you what she cut up, what he does to you. I cannot help you the way he helps you. I cannot rescue you the way he can. I have the. I wish someone would realize that the demons are screaming just as loud as God is right now to you saying, we cannot do for you what the power of the word, the power of the church, and the power of the spirit can do for you. Uh, we, we can't do it. And then they said, this is nothing else but the finger of God. All of our power can't match up with one finger of his. And it appears that they disappear from the, from the, from the stage. Because Pharaoh no longer calls them to challenge the power of Moses. He's starting to realize that my entertainment is not as powerful as his anointing. But the problem is he's still not delivered and he's still not changed. There are some people that do not struggle with the addictions of the world, but they're just stuck watching the move of God. He's just watching Moses do plagues now. But he's not saying, deliver me. Moses unleashed a plague of boils. And the Bible makes this statement that, and the, the boils got on the magicians. They weren't even in the room. They couldn't show up to the palace because they had boils. Now, we just read that and move on, but... but if you want to know what's so powerful about that is, remember back at the burning bush when Moses threw the rod down and it became a snake and he grabbed it by the tail? You know, that was going to be because he was going to go stand before Pharaoh and need to throw the rod down. But also at the burning bush, he put his hand in his bosom and it, and it came out lepros, leprosy. And so he put it back inside his coat and it came out clean. And that almost, that almost appears like, what was the point of that? Until you read what the word boils means. Leprosy. Oh. In the, in the Hebrew, leprosy. So the boils get on the entertainment of Pharaoh. So strongly that they cannot come into Pharaoh's house. What would happen, he cuts you, if the anointing, and the power of God came into your life and did not just deliver you from the spirit of entertainment, but drove it out of the atmosphere because it could not stay in a place that was holy and sacred and consecrated. I know we're giving it to Pentecostal. That would be nice. I don't intend to change. But I wish somebody would recognize, I don't just want a deliverance. I want you to destroy. I want the magicians to get boils. I want entertainment regretting the day it came and attacked your child. I want that spirit that's trying to baptize your brain and take you away from the presence of God to regret the day it ever entered your house and distracted you from your life of consecration. I want that spirit to recognize I messed with the wrong dad. I messed with the wrong mother. I messed with the wrong young person because they've made up their mind not to just get away from me. They want to get rid of me. They want me out of the atmosphere.
And Pharaoh said, Moses, entreat the Lord for me. You know what that means in the Hebrew? Intercede for me. Here's a side note. You can't be entertained and intercede at the same time. If you want to be an intercessor, you can't be focused on entertainment. You'll have to have someone. If you're always having to have people pray for you. I'm not saying if you're sick. I'm not saying, you know what I'm talking about. Well, it's every day like, oh, pray for me. I just don't feel like going to church. I just don't feel like reading the Bible. I don't feel like watching online. I don't feel like, I just don't. If that's you all the time, something else has your eyes. Yeah. Come on, Moses, intercede for me. I know you're, you've got a closer walk with God than I do. It's one thing to pray if you're sick and you're in need, your family. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about all the time. Watch this. And nine plagues go by, and here comes the tenth one. Death angel walking in Pharaoh's house. Can't see him. He can watch the magicians. He can watch Moses, but he can't see this thing coming in. The death angel goes and kills Pharaoh's boy. Now watch. And Pharaoh says, get out of here. Go. You be delivered. And they head to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea opens, and Pharaoh changes his mind and chases them into a miracle. Ready? Ready? The first statement he ever made, show for you a miracle. He starts the engagement with Moses wanting to watch the miraculous. And he ends his life watching the miraculous wash over him. Dying in a move of God. Dying watching the power of God sweep over everyone around me. I just feel like saying something right now. You know, I remember there, there was a lady named Michael who ma- married David. And when, and when David came home one time worshiping the Lord every six steps and was dancing before the Lord, everyone was engaging with David except for somebody who was watching David. And when you go from engaging to being entertained, you get a critical spirit real quick. The critics in the atmosphere, even in this room, they always stand out because they don't engage the move of God. They critique everything. And when you critique everything God is doing, he said, oh, you're just showing off. You're trying to get attention. No, you want attention. That's why you're acting crazy and not getting with the move of God. You want to stand out. The whole church is worshiping and you're mad. Here's what, here's what no one preaches. Here's the cost. I want everyone to get this. If you get nothing else, I, I've tried to give it to you the, way I, the best way I can. Here's the cost of entertainment. She said, ah, and she becomes barren. We all preach that. But years later, she had seven boys before that. Seven boys. And the Philistines came and said, we want Saul's family to pay the price for what he did to us. And we want Michael's seven kids to die and they did and here's my statement to you if Pharaoh and Michael could preach one message to you they would tell you the cost of entertainment will manifest in your kids I'm going to let that sit because usually an altar call breaks out right there and someone is stirred I'm going to let it sit again. The cost of being intoxicated with what entertains you ultimately destroys what's following you. Well, I can handle the addiction and I, I still go to church. Just because you can does not mean your son needs to fight his daddy's demons. 
And just because you can, mom, does not mean your daughter should have to entangle with your monsters that you, someone needs to recognize that there's a breakthrough that takes place in my family when I shut the door to hell. Stand to your feet right now. Was everything we watch bad? No, I'm not saying everything you watch is bad. I'm not saying that we're human. We have eyes. We see. Most people see. I'm not saying. What I'm saying is when church is now entertaining. When pastor says, let's all raise our hands, and I just don't feel like doing it. So I don't. Entertained. When pastor says, let's press into the spirit and let's break through. And I just find something to critique. There's something in your palace, Pharaoh, that's trying to get you to wake up and recognize before it's too late, you need to get a hold of God and you need to sober up in the spirit because you're watching something that's not even after you. It's after your baby. It's after your marriage. It's after your grandchild. It's after your future. And can I tell you in the Holy Ghost, the difference between Moses and Pharaoh is this. Pharaoh said, I, I want to see the miracles. Moses said, I want to see the glory. Pharaoh said, I'm here for the show. Moses said, I am the show. I've come to do everything I can personally for God. I've not come to spectate, Brother Joel, and watch whether you're with me or not. I'm not come to see if you're going to worship I've come to give God everything because I'm here to give him I'm not here to watch humans I'm here for God to watch me as I give him my heart and my soul is there anybody that will shut down the voices of the lions Well, I'm just so afraid. That's because you're watching CNN and Fox all day and not reading your Bible. You can't be entertained and engage the Spirit. Should we keep up with this world? Absolutely, but we should not forget that we are not of this world, and this world is not our home, and we are just passing And so if you're searching for comfort, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the days of comfort have left our nation and left for good. Can I tell you something? If you have to be comfortable to be happy, it means you have to be entertained to engage something. I've come to warn you in the Holy Ghost and warn this nation that we are drunk on our own comfort and our own ability to make things beautiful. We have got to have the real thing in our atmosphere. We've got to have that old time apostolic if you were sick you got healed in the altar if you need the Holy Ghost you got it when the saints prayed for you if there were devils on you we would cast them out I know I feel alone but I'm in the Holy Ghost right now and I tell this church and I'm telling this country it is time to awake from slumber. I'm not ta- if you're watching online, I'm not trying to attack you for being home. I know you're sick. I know you, you can't get out and leave the house. I'm not, but I ask you if you're home, don't use us as a crutch to sit there and watch church, turn it off, and then go to Target five minutes later. Let me tell you in the Holy Ghost, there needs to be something that takes place in our homes where we say, if I can't get out, I'm still going to make this house a sanctuary, and I'm going to worship God, and I'm not going to let hell come in and take me into fear and into anxiety and depression depression and worry let my people go everything rising against your mind against your family has no power against the word of God and the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the spirit of Jesus and the angels of Jesus and the will of Jesus and the covering of your pastor whom Jesus has sent everything you need somebody make the pew or make the chairs make the row the altar and rededicate your eyes and your 
and your ears and your mouth. Because there's a deliverance coming. And it's coming in a massive way. Don't be left behind. Every preacher saying it. We're racing the rapture. We're racing the rapture. We're racing the rapture. Don't get too comfortable in your entertainment mentality. Don't get so glued to the show that you can't feel the spirit. Don't lose your spiritual eyesight, Samson, and think everything is fine while you're entertained by Delilah that's cutting off the locks of your head. Don't sit there and think you have the same power while Delilah causes you to stupor into an intoxicated moment where you completely give it all away and assume you're still the same person. Let me just say one more thing. Don't settle for yesterday's consecrations. You're powerful, but that doesn't mean you're spiritual. Bishop and I were talking about that in the office this morning. You're gifted, but that doesn't mean you're spiritual. It means you were at one time spiritual. If God has given you a gift, it's because at one point you were spiritual. It was when you first got into church and you were on fire and you, were, you got the Holy Ghost. You were talking to everybody you could about the Lord. You were reading your Bible every day. You were praying. You were fasting. You were paying your tithes. You were all in. And now you're kind of riding that season of 12 years ago and just coasting along. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I've, I've matured spiritually. You've matured past worship. You've matured past consecration. Past consistency, past commitment, and past sacrifice. You know, I feel the Holy Ghost, Bishop, right now. I don't even know who I'm talking to, but I'm telling you right now, don't, lie, don't settle for that lie. That's a lying spirit that wants to get you in a drifting mentality. Lord, in the name of Jesus, rekindle a fire and renew a hunger in the men and women of this church and under the sound of my voice that used to pray. I know we've got several prayer warriors in here, and I know you're with me, but those that used to walk with you in a deeper way, the only explanation, God, if I used to be closer, is that I've slid in backwards. God, help me right now to regain the focus and the attention and the desire used to consume me.